Good morning and welcome in. My name is Mitch Nellis, a.k.a. Thunder, and this is The Connect Show with John and Tracy and others right here on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on the, face, the, the Book of Faces, and wherever you get your digital content. So excited to be with you if you're watching live. Thank you so much for being here. If you're watching this on replay this evening, tonight, sometime this weekend, hopefully you're somewhere comfy. Hopefully you're somewhere, I was going to say warm, but it's February and it's 50 degrees out. It's I'm crazy. It. Well, I'm with here it, for it. Yeah, it's just well, to tease you. Well, with it, you can't, it's kind of blocked by, by my name there, but we got all the treats and snacks mm -hmm. today. It is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, give your significant other a hug. And if you don't have a significant other, you can take yourself dancing. You can write your name in the sand. Yes, you can do all those things. You, you can, can just even go buy give yourself someone some a hug. flowers. I mean, if Miley Cyrus tells us that, that we did can be you, empowered to do it, did we can you, do it. Did you know that, that she wrote that song as a reason? Spe yeah, specifically Bruno from a previous relationship? She well, had? so yeah. Liam Hemsworth, which is mm -hmm. Thor's brother, you know, because he's Chris, whatever Hemsworth. Um, like, and every line has like specific meaning. Yep. And if you watch the video, she actually filmed part of it in the house that he had rented to cheat on other women, Oi. to cheat on her with other women. And Br the Bruno Mars <laughs> song, which <laughs> the chorus is literally taken from, yeah. line by line, was their wedding dance song. Mm. Like, it's, I mean, she is like, she devious. puts some, yes. Yeah, she is. She is <laughs> awesome. Well, today it's all Johns all the time. It's a lot of Johns. Here. Yeah. Um, really excited for our guests, John Neal and John Fisher, and we'll get into them. John, um, John Taylor's not here. No. It's so weird not to have him here. It is. But John Carlo is here running behind the it, scenes. Just another John. Him. Yeah. <laughs> and so without any further ado, I get to, uh, introduce the true hosts of the show, Tracy and Cam Tracy. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day Happy to you. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Um, welcome, everybody, to The Connect Show. We're in episode 22. That's that's perfect for February. 22, season three. We're discussing everything still about money, money, money this month. I can tell you, after last week's show, I put some time into my finances. Let me tell you, it was a motivator. Um, so we're still talking about money, insurance, accounting. My name's Tracy again, and uh, according to Mitch, I am wicked smart. Wicked smart. <laughs> um, and I am always joined here with my partner in crime, Kim Nock. Hi, everybody. Happy Valentine's <laughs> Day. I get a yo, yo, yo for everyone. <laughs> I am the bomb.com because I showed up today. That's all. Wow. That's all I got. <laughs> plus for showing up, huh? I showed up, and my name's not John. Like uh, we're super pleased to have our guests, John Fisher and John Neal. We're making it easy. One has an H, one doesn't. That's that's our True. differentiator. Um, all Johns, all the time. John Carlo, John Taylor, we miss you. Tracy and I are really looking forward to our conversations. More money, more motivation, mm -hmm. in my opinion. So, yeah, I'm excited. I like that. More motivation, not more, not more money, more problems. No, no more money, no. more motivation. Yeah, no. we have been motivated. More freedom, more Absolutely. awesome, more opportunities. Mm -hmm. Knocking. The good moors. The good moors. Yeah. Uh, we also love to start our show by thanking our sponsors and our partners. The Connect Show is brought to you by Connect Media Live, where we help businesses reach one to many through social media, video, and web development. So if it's time to move to one to many, if you're if you're talking to like a small crowd and you're ready to go bigger, uh, contact ConnectMedia.live for more information. Well, and our friend Ben, who was here a couple weeks ago, is looking into this very opportunity. Yes, I, I had coffee yes. with him last week. Oh, did you? He was here and he, he was filming some stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he's going to make it happen for uh, for Think Local. There are a That's lot awesome. of great companies around that are like, hey, I want a show mm -hmm. and I can do a show. John's got, John's got another one with Thrive and us. And mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of great opportunities out there for us. No so doubt. I'm excited to watch all of these smaller businesses just shoot up by, uh, by doing that. We also have to thank our hosting sponsor, Expansive Workspace. We broadcast the show every week live from Studio A5, our brand new space with right. our third show, fourth show. I have a question, though. Yeah. Why did the studio name stay the same when we switched location? Shouldn't shouldn't the downstairs room be Studio A5 and this should be like Studio B7? I don't know. You would you think. Gotta, you got to fight John on that Does one. Does A5 I think mean likes, something? Maybe. We got to ask John. We got to ask John. Maybe you get to John pick John your letters and numbers here. It could be. Yeah, I don't know. It I, is a creative space. It is very creative, yes. and it's and it's built for creative. Uh, we have tremendous 
restaurants in the area. Every Tuesday, we go for Taco Tuesday at Mex Avenue. We got the water tower to look at. It's wonderful. And then we get all the good stuff here every week. So if you are interested in coming to the Share Workspace at Expansive, check out Expansive.com. We have a location here in Tosa, downtown Milwaukee. Which will be March 7th. We're going to be there March 7th. Perfusion. I'm, ex- I'm excited. It's I'm actually going to be there a few times next month. Right. So super excited. I heard that space is absolutely beautiful and huge. Mm. So well, I'm really excited, excited to be there. Um, so go to Expansive.com for more information. Um, today we're gonna we're gonna bring Adam on here to talk more often about expansive because for sure yeah he's not here today though. yeah but we but we should in general mm-hmm. we should mm-hmm. yeah and as always we're very thankful that you have come to watch the connect show if you have a topic we should be discussing please email us email us at ideas at the connect show dot com way to go I did it I did it way to go ideas at the connect show dot com don't be shy send those emails clickety clack. I can do that on the table today. You can. Because the mics aren't on yes, the table. Yes, I know. It's so great. I love it. I feel up. free-reigned. You still might drive John Carlo crazy. That's Just fair. No, it's, it's all good? He go. can't hear it? Oh, oh it's even better. I put in I put in a vote for this more often because <laughs> I don't want to be restricted. John the, Carlo in, bank. John Taylor out. <laughs> Sorry. Just kidding. Just kidding. Whoa, slow down, everybody. We're going to see if John actually watches this replay. Yeah. <laughs> He'll probably start laughing. <laughs> we have to thank our guests from last week, Lori Rifkin and Rachel Lamantia. We talked about cash being king, how to focus on what's important when running your own business. And I was happy and like you, motivated after mm-hmm. our conversations last week. Mitch, can you tell us about this? <clears throat> I can certainly try. Uh, well, John Neal is here, and I had the pleasure of meeting John Neal for the first time this morning. But I've heard John Neal's name for probably about the last 20 years. Being an old radio guy, um, John Neal has been a presence on the radio as an advertiser talking about um, his profession and his expertise when it comes to accounting, when it comes to finance. Um, And the fact that John Neal's here, to me, shows that he, he he is the one. Like, he's the guy. He knows what's up. He will help you increase your profits. He will help you pocket more money. He's a tax guru. He is, you know, well versed in all things taxes. So if you're if if you're if you're sticky, or if you're not, you know, whatever. whatever um, I, I don't know how to say it nicely. Whatever situation you find yourself in, and hopefully everything is is easy and 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 um, and you know. I, I guess easy easy to accomplish. Um, John can help you, but John can help you know if you own multiple businesses or if you or if you've had you know a breakup with a business partner or whatever that might look like. Um, he's a graduate of Milwaukee Hamilton High School, so he's lived here almost his whole life. Um, he went to the Lubar School at UWM, um, so he's a proud 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 Milwaukeean. Um, and I should ask you before: is that super cute Brown Lab? Is the Brown Lab still with us? Oh, that yeah. so. I, he um his he has a super cute brown lab which is just like I want to go to your house right now and play with your dog like this is all great and everything but I want to go play with the dog that I saw on social media because that looks like a lot of fun um so John Neal is here and he's going to teach us a lot about uh, the accounting world and and more um John Fisher is also here and John Fisher's got like he's got the the insurance and he's got the finance and all that sort of stuff but. On his LinkedIn, he said he's a small-time baseball nerd. So basically, John Fisher and I are just going to talk baseball for the next half hour, and everybody else can watch. Um, he is a San Diego native, so I assume you're a Padres guy. Are you kind of a Brewers guy, too, though, now that you live here a little bit? All right, just make it start. Um, but a great background in insurance and in finance, spent time with NML, spent time with Transamerica, with New York Life, and now he's doing his own thing. Um, and he's really has that opportunity now to connect with everyone in the community um, on the insurance side. And, you know, one of the things we talk about so much on the Connect Show is relationships. Um, and I know that both of the Johns who are here today really believe in the power of relationships um, and getting to know their clients, getting to find out their passions, what motivates them, because that's what develops that that business relationship to a personal relationship to the next level where you know you're really working with someone. You're, you might be working for them or on behalf of them, but you're really working with them to find the best solutions. And listen, so many of us are lost these days when it comes to finances or taxes or insurance or whatever it is. And so to know that we have trustworthy people in our community like John and John who are here to help us are great. Um, John Fisher spent time at Fordham in New York. Uh, he went to Drake. 
uh, over in Iowa. And uh, now we are super excited that he is here in Milwaukee. So John Neal, John Fisher, cannot wait to hear from them. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. So the Connect Show is better when it's interactive. So please add your comments in the chat. So if you're over there on LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube, and you're watching us live right now, just put some comments in the chat. Our John Carlo will put the information up here for us to see it, and we will address your comments. Wow. I just want to know who calls him John Carlo because we've always known him as Carlo. I know, but now so is I'm that like a family him. family only <laughs> that calls him John Carlo? So now it's like now are we family? Like, are we, oh, yeah. we're family oh, now. Yes. Aww, oh, I, I love, love it. it. And <laughs> Tracy has finally dropped the S and learned it's Carlo. Yeah, it is well, not that's Carlos. Hard. I, I think. See you know, how happy he is. That's why we're happy. now family. And that's a that's, natural mistake, I think. I'm sure he's course. heard that. I'm sure he gets that way more than fifty percent of the time. But we're, but we're family now, so now we know. we're family. Yeah. She she initiated that family moment, I think, by dropping it. Tracy. See, there was a motive to the madness. Aww. Aww. <laughs> and we're all volunteers here at the Connect Show. If you want to volunteer and be a part of our amazing team with Tracy, Mitch, all the Johns, and I, um, and all of the other people sending out emails and getting you guys here to watch this show every week, um, please email email us ideas at the Connect Show dot com. Um, we're we're happy to bring more people on. The Always. email inbox is open. It is available. So if you send an email there, we will get that email. Yeah. It's not a closed email inbox. Right. It's an inbox Show for a reason. Us yeah. Money. Yeah. It's like a storefront can be closed, but the email inbox is open. So even in the it. middle of the night. That's right. If you feel if you feel compelled in the middle of the night. Go right ahead. All right. So we're off to our quote of the day. The word accounting comes from the word accountability. Very true. If you are going to be rich, you need to be accountable for your money. Robert. Ooh, look, she gave you give yourself the name. Go Robert for it. Robert Kiyosaki. Is that Works right? for me. Yeah. Other rich dad, author Rich Dad Poor Dad. Kiyosaki. Kiyosaki. Yeah. I actually tried to do some research to see if the word accounting really does come from the word accountability. And everywhere I found was just this quote. Really? Because, yeah, because Rich Dad Poor Dad's a pretty yeah, very popular. very popular book. And so like everywhere I found it, I didn't I didn't dig deep. Mm -hmm. I didn't get into like the mm -hmm. etymology of like mm -hmm. you know, you didn't go into like I, the no, I didn't Webster get into the dictionary. Latin and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> I just tried to, you know, I did a simple Google search. But every Google search literally just came up with Kiyosaki. And that's okay. All right. Well. I, figured, I figured it looks like a good quote, whether it's whether it's real or not. Mm -hmm. It's like one of those feel-good ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, accounting, accountability. Yeah, I, that makes sense. But if you think about this, you know, the people that don't really have money, how accountable are they for their money? It's easy to blame. Oh, I don't have money because blah, or I don't have money because that blah. But if you're owning the reason and you know, you can find it, you find these great accountants to help you own that portion of your money. It puts all accountability on you. I think John Neal might be looking it up for us right now. I feel like he's doing my homework for me. So I appreciate that. <laughs> can I ask a question before question of the day? No, Tracy and I are going to leave. If you do, you can't, it's, right. if you go off script, should I go? No, no, no. Go uh, ahead. Darn. Yeah. I, I tried. <laughs> so we have Mr. Sports Guy here, Mitch Nellis. Oh, okay. Mr. Music oh. Guy here, Mitch Nellis. Oh. We don't have anything in here about the Super Bowl that happened on Sunday. I don't, I, it's because I don't want to talk about it. I did a podcast yesterday that I am thinking about not watching another football game until next year's Super Bowl. Like, I think I'm taking a year off of football. A whole so year. It was, such, it was such a great game for 58 minutes. Yeah. And it was such an abomination of – everything we believe in sports for the yeah. last two yeah that i just like i am i'm ready and the nfl's never been my favorite yeah i've always been more of a basketball baseball guy yeah. than football but i'm ready to walk away for a full year from the nfl because of how awful and yes by the letter of the law is that a penalty sure yeah. but the refs might have well come out and said with two minutes left the game's over kansas city won everybody go home yeah i totally like the, game, they, the refs the end of the game if you make a bad call in the second quarter, yeah. there's time for the game to rewrite itself, yeah. to get back to whole. Mm -hmm. When you do that with less than two minutes left, the game is, oh, you, you have done. skewed the result mm -hmm. to an extent that you can never recover from that. And as a fan, I'm not here for that. Yeah. I'm just not. So so I'm very close. And I want to like, but I want to do something fun with it. Like yeah. I want to raise money for charity. Good. Or I want to do volunteer work. Or I want to do something fun with my family. Or all the above. All the above, yeah. I don't set my Sundays aside to watch I football don't games. No. But but it's always on in the background. Sure. Now, like, what if it's not even on in the background? What am I going to do? Can you know, do? What else can I do with that yeah. time? Yeah. I so, love that thought. Yeah. I have to say the uh, national anthem 
was Chris the Stapleton. best I've ever it seen. It was awesome. It was the best I've ever seen. He could sing me to sleep every night. He might yeah, be my favorite. He was great. Yes. I mean, people will say still, ninety-one Whitney Houston is probably the best. Oh, and this course, might have been like great, this might have been like, but people were putting it in that category, which is known as the best one ever. Yeah, yeah. Her, I mean, hers yeah. is during the Gulf War, during yes. ninety-one. It was like, yes. but like that. This one is in that. I mean, he was spectacular for sure. And I won't comment on the halftime show because I mean, just, I'm, I'm we, good. I'm good. We can, we can, we can <laughs> agree to disagree. But I had to bring it up because I'm yeah. like, okay, your sports, right. your yeah. music. It's you must fair. have some sure. sort of comment. Like, yeah. Why, yeah. I, I why is Mitch not I didn't talking have, about I didn't have money today. on the game. Like, I'm not upset because, like, I, I didn't have a rooting interest. You know, I'm a Boston native who lives in Milwaukee, so I kind of, by nature, hate Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But don't we all? Um, <laughs> and, and Kansas City is kind of like, Kansas City's nice, but I'm not, I have no connection to them. Um, and I just like, but because of the way the game ended, it left such a sour taste in my mouth that I'm thinking about like, I'm thinking about being done with, with the NFL mm. for a year. Mm. See you next Super Bowl. We would have been really excited. Yeah. My brother was super Bengals fan. So it's either yeah. really Packers for me. Right, and like I would if have the Bills or Bengals happy. had made it, it would yeah. have been way more excited because then that Excellent. underdog story, you know. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can so. move off the sports. We don't <laughs> want to get too upset. But I, am, I, have I, I am going to the Bucks Celtics game tonight. Oh, Great! So, yeah. I have friends that are doing a suite. They upgraded for some Valentine's Ooh. suite thing. Can they? Like, can you send great. my number to them and sure. they take a couple extra spots? Oh, so I could bring Mrs. Thunder with me and uh, impress her. Be like, oh, I know these people. Right. Yeah. Great Valentine's. Absolutely. Is, yeah. Absolutely. Nice. All right. Now <laughs> okay. let's get to the right. now good let's get to the question of the day. So that could be your answer on how you keep create your creative side going. Yeah. Is sports that's true Uh, especially when it's time to really buckle down to do your finances accounting insurance i mean yeah i just ignore my finances accounting insurance and i do a podcast about sports that's what i I do to keep my credit going totally john and john are going to tell me i'm an idiot and i know i am i know i'm an idiot i don't know what i don't know i mean i'm excited to hear from both of you today because i don't know anything about any of this well that's because i think the creative side is totally opposite of the the finance accounting insurance side like Mm -hmm. it's totally but how do you inject creativity into finance and accounting and insurance. Well, they because, must know because, how. Right, because we're told, how. like, here's a spreadsheet and fill it out. And, and I do my own taxes, so I'm you not totally illiterate. You can draw little pictures on the but, side. Right. But I want to hear, like, how they keep the creative juices flowing, even when you're so, fo- like, nope, I'm dedicating this time block to my finances. I think if you something. turn some of it into a game, that might help. Like uh, a yeah. challenge for yourself or a goal. I like that. You know how so, I'm yeah. keeping it creative? I've decided this year I'm hiring someone for it. I'm mm-hmm. done doing it myself. Okay. I don't, I'm done doing it myself so <laughs> yeah. I can put my creative juices elsewhere. That's what I'm doing. Nice. Yeah, I'm done. Cool. I always I'm, have done my own finance. And with all due respect to us who are on the creative side, yeah. I am excited to hear the, the finance and the accounting. Yeah. Those guys, mm-hmm. how they answer that Absolutely. question. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, can't, I can't continue doing it on my own because no. it's taking away from the creative. And it's not your jam. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. How about you, Tracy? How are you? I uh, literally trying to make it into a daily, weekly, monthly habit because I don't know. Like the quote says, you're not going to get rich unless you can be accountable for your money. So I'm just making myself do it. Mm -hmm. Just making it. I would say one thing is like I take a lot of walks. So even when I'm doing something like last week, I had this project due and it was due Friday, but I had every day I had hours of reading and proofreading and like, um, and I just had to get up and take a walk and, and there wasn't a ton of creativity in what I was doing, but I knew if I could get to the next time marker that I set for myself and take a walk or spend 10 minutes on TikTok or whatever mm-hmm. it was going to be that I could like, you know, reset my brain and then jump back into the next hour, hour and a half of yeah. work or whatever it was. And I think that, that for me, that like, I'm not a good sit at my desk for eight hours type right. of person. Right. I need, I need. I need breaks. Oh, you're I need, social for yeah. sure. That mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. I think for me, like I'm, I'm still a numbers dork, even though it doesn't bring a lot of the creative to me. So I'll find some happiness in creating a spreadsheet and watching all the numbers work, mm-hmm. and then passing that spreadsheet off to someone else <laughs> to be <laughs> able to to do all of the things when it comes to um, taxes and bookkeeping. I'm kind of okay with, but the taxes, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm That's right. fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We awesome. have no, we have no John. No, we, we don't have, have John. We have another we John. Have John Carlo. Do we yeah. have anything going on in the chat? If not, make sure you're commenting along with us. We've had some good conversation already this morning. Um, John will usually give me a thumbs down. I can't see the screen from here, so I'm thinking that's a no. That's a thumbs down from John Carlo. So make sure that you're commenting along with us. We see that you're watching. So. Yep. 
Um, we are going to have a few words from our sponsor, Wild Calm, and then we're going to work on bringing our first guest up. Welcome. Absolutely. Welcome. Yes. Thanks, guys. Uh, just sitting here next to the beach. I feel like Phil Dunphy from an episode of Modern Family or something in front of the TV screen. But I want to tell you about Wild Calm. And Wild Calm is a, it's a new CBD oil company that we got involved with. And um, it's completely THC free. So for me, I've been sober for a long time. So uh, not having psychoactive effects as a result of taking something like CBD were very important to me. It's also important for people who may be pregnant, become pregnant, uh, who are on other medications or don't want to have the feeling of being high but would like the benefits of being on CBD, such as uh, uh, elite athletes. So when I started taking it, it really helped me sleep well. Uh, deep sleep where I felt really refreshed and energized in the morning. The interesting thing is it not only helps me sleep, but in the morning when I, my mind's going all over and I got a million things to do, we have shows going on and all these different things, I can take it and it helps quiet the chatter and it doesn't alter my brain, it just gives me more focus and I'm able to be more productive. So if you'd like to learn more about uh, Wild Calm, we're gonna put a link in the, in the show notes, but we're also going to put a coupon code. So if you'd like to try it, there's gonna be a special opportunity for, to get a discount, uh, and, and see if it's right for you. So back to you, Kim and Tracy and Mitch. Thanks, John, for the info about Wild Calm. I actually, I think it was two weeks ago, we had, tried a, it? We had a nice event here sponsored mm -hmm. by Wild Calm. Um, we had great speakers and it was like a wellness thing. It was absolutely great. I've tried Wild Calm. It is 100% THC free, made bottled all of the things in Wisconsin. And um, it took me from from 100 to like 20 super fast. Like I was on super hyper and it just it calmed me. So 100% THC free CBD. Why is stuff. it? Do you know why it's called wild calm? Is it if you like think wild? deep about the name, like, you know, oh, because you, you started wild yeah. and now you're calm. So okay. there's also like, um, stuff for like muscle aches that you put directly onto the muscle area and stuff like that. I don't, I'm not affiliated with the stuff, but I do like it. It's nice. very, very, very good. Well, so. anyways, if you guys want to try it, reach out to John. Yeah. John Taylor, that is. John Taylor. Yes. Welcome, John Fisher, to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> happy uh, Valentine's Day. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day. You guys Day. too. John helps people with their life insurance and retirement related financial needs, backed by a diverse team of experts. He specializes in working with retirees, business owners, and their employees. John and his team yep. use a consultative process by completing a strategy session with each and every one of their clients. <clears throat> so we want to ask you the question of the day, too. Uh, is insurance like a creative outlet for you, or do you have other cre creative outlets? That is a fantastic question. I think bringing it back to, you know, what today really is, Valentine's Day, I think, you know, love is creative, isn't it, right? Mm -hmm. This is something that mm -hmm. my significant other, you know, gives me stuff about, right? As if of course. you're not creative in love, then, you know, what are you really doing? So, um, you know, I, I think when you, when you love what you do, and that's just as much about, you know, helping clients as it is about the subject matter, whether that's insurance, money, retirement, mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's, that's where the creativity really kicks in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You brought up such a point. Like there's a lot of pressure about being creative for Valentine's day, by the way, a lot of pressure for that always. Yeah. Don't you feel like it's like, well, you have to be something extra, mm -hmm. which is, it's really something you should give every day. Just saying. Yeah, Just saying. that is true. true. That is true. So you got to give do your you, creative every day. Do you, the other one that I found that has become super stressful for people to be creative is uh, asking somebody to marry you. Like there are some or crazy ways or, <laughs> or prom. They prom do. was not a thing when I was in high school. No, to, like, it was through, like, it was, do you want me to thing. buy you a ticket? Now it's this whole big thing on how to invite the person to go to prom with you. <laughs> it really like, can yep. we go back? I mean, can we, can you guys have done that when we were kids? Right? Cause that would be so fun. It would be fun. <clears throat> okay. So, John, John, how did you get into the insurance business? Well, um, like Mitch mentioned, I went to Drake and I studied the math 
science and economics of insurance. Um, so that was kind of my background. So after working for, you know, several years after college, um, you know, I, I realized that it's not just those kind of numerical things, right? Yeah. That I wasn't raised to just crunch numbers, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I was raised to be someone who endeavors to help other people and really be out in the community and have, you know, relationships. And I think that is the, um, the brilliance of the field that I get to be in now. And I think socially you're very good about that. Like you're, you are about building the relationships with people, not just like, here's my hard sell on insurance, Mm -hmm. buy insurance for me or whatever it is, you know, like, I mean, we've been networking for a few years together now. I think, yeah, I think it started in, during the pandemic on Zoom is is when we first met each other. Yes. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) <clears throat> so tell us about the final wishes guide written by your company's founder, Mitch Brewer. What is the final wishes guide? So this is basically just uh, a compilation, if you will, of things to consider when it comes to planning for your final wishes, you know, eventually when your time will come. And mm-hmm. for me, you know, hopefully being young, that's really far off. But, um, you know, there are even simple ways that I've started to think about it myself, right, when it comes to, um, you know, having the proper protection in place, you know, having things like income replacement plan. um, Mm. But also, right, how you want that time to go for your family. Yeah, right. Do you want it to be more stressful because you've done less planning or do you want it to be as stress-free as possible and make sure that they really are well taken care of even though you know they're now missing you and it is a very hard time um you know i i think this is the kind of thing that with valentine's day we can think about you know that's what you do with love right you're not just creative but you want to make sure that you nurture that And so the final wishes guide just kind of helps walk you through some of the practical aspects of that. Mm. And so do you teach younger generations also that this is just as important to handle when you're younger and change it as your life changes, right? Isn't, wouldn't you say that's still kind of important? Absolutely. I mean, when you're younger, something to think about is if there's anyone who, you know, relies on you for your income, or if you have, um, you know, some student loans that you took out that could be potentially have that debt passed to, um, you know, the, the folks who will be around after you in, mm-hmm. in your family, your, your spouse, etc. cetera. Um, you know, those are things that you can really like take off the table just by making sure that, you know, you, you talk to someone who's qualified and has your best interests in mind. Well, and young people more and more now are, are developing great assets and purchasing homes and, you know, something has to happen with all of those things. It's not a conversation anyone wants to have, right? But right. you still should think about think about that whole long-term plan and change it as your life changes, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, and, and I think a lot of it isn't coming totally from, <clears throat> like, when you're growing up, it, it might not be something that your parents did, so maybe you didn't know about any of this stuff. You know, so how do you, how do you learn about it? Do you have any like programs in place or any way that you can help educate people? Do you meet with people to help them understand what all these things are? Yeah. I mean, that, that's the entire purpose of um, the strategy session that I do with every client, right? So it's about meeting clients where they're at and really just taking the time to understand what they do know, what they don't know without passing judgment and, by doing that, we can really help them take those steps to get to that understanding and literacy that that they need just to make sure that they have 
a proper plan in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really important. I mean, I had my house when I was 25. It was never, I mean, they say it like when you're in your closing, oh, you should get a will and blah, 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 blah. But it's not really something that you think about mm -hmm. when you're like, yeah, I purchased 25, a home. Just, I don't have kids. Yet, the world yet. You know, you just, you don't think about those things naturally. And it's not something you want to think about. I'm going to live forever, mm -hmm. you know? But it's just, it's definitely not something you think about. So mm -hmm. I really, I think that's really important and kind of important word to spread. Mm -hmm. So what does it look like if somebody <clears throat> comes to you? Um, what does uh, the process look like to help them, to help educate them? Like, what do you go through, like a Q&A or... You know, what does the process look like that yeah, they can expect? It, yeah, exactly. So I'll ask some questions, give them the opportunity to ask questions. I always make sure to explain a little bit at the beginning of the conversation, you know, how it works. Um, there's a process that I step through every time where we can, um, you know, look at basically the building blocks that will help you to protect what you have and grow over the course of time and focus on what it is that matters most to you as opposed to just here's a blanket recommendation mm -hmm. right so go ahead then you're working with people of all ages i would assume people can just start doing insurance at the age of 60 if they wanted to yeah i mean <laughs> you can <laughs> i mean at any time whenever you're like oh well, i just need to get this started yep i mean basically Unless you're on life support, if there's some way that there's you something. can that you can still be planning. So um, every age, you know, business owners are, are all ages, right? They right. could be eighty right. or they yeah. could be twenty. Um, yeah, a lot of people so, start their businesses in their forties and fifties, and maybe they hadn't even considered it before then. Yeah, I mean, there's um, a lot to consider as a business owner because obviously you don't have some of those benefits that you normally have in a corporate job. And that's something that I've seen, you know, change, been through those changes myself. So I understand that mm -hmm. people might need a little extra help, a little extra push. Um, and of course, business owners are always busy. So it mm -hmm. helps to have someone in your corner walking you through it. Right. Absolutely. So if you had this opportunity right now to change someone's future, whether it's business or um, personal for the better, what what advice would you give them today before you walked off the show today? What's something you could do to change dun, everyone? Dun. Just take the time to reach out and meet with someone because honestly, the best thing that you can do is not go through it yourself, right? Yeah. Don't put it on yourself and your family only to figure out everything, you know, just by going on Google or whatever, mm -hmm. because a lot of times, you could search for <laughs> days, hours, whatever it is on Google before you really find what's most relevant. Um, whereas if you have that partner to help you through the process, you can very quickly get to, okay, this is what is really going to be the most important thing mm -hmm. to act on now. I think that's really important, Key, because having been through that, it, you you don't want to go through that when you're when you're in mourning or anything. You don't want your family to go through that. It's very difficult, and you're going to miss things. You're gonna miss things, and then something's gonna come up six months later. Oh, I didn't even know that existed. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's very very important. So, um, I I love that. Yeah, it is. It's 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 a that is a very good message because I think some people are afraid to reach out and go get insurance itself for whatever reasons because they think it's a scam or they uh -huh. think it's like not worth the money or the investment or the time or any of that stuff, which can totally make people just no i'm just gonna go save up some money and that's just the way i'm gonna do it <laughs> yeah i mean people people have all of these ideas like it's not affordable or mm -hmm. i'm not gonna qualify for it or you know i'm too heavy there are so many different products out there that, um, you know, there's always going to be the ability to find you something. That's mm -hmm. just why you need to go through it with that partner to make sure that it fits your budget, it fits what you need, and it's right for your family. Awesome. Excellent advice. Yeah. Excellent advice. 
So I have to thank you for joining us, First Gen, for today. Do you have any offer, upcoming event, anything you'd like to share with our audience today? Yeah. Um, I mean, the main thing is that obviously anyone can reach out to, to us at Brewer Insurance and, and Solutions, and we'd be more than happy. The strategy session doesn't cost anything. Um, and we always follow up with at least one or two recommendations that are going to help push the needle for, for our clients. Um, you know, whether they take that advice or not is totally up to them and there's never any pressure. Um, it's really just about making sound decisions for your family. That's fabulous. We also have a page for you on the website so people can easily find you the connectshow.com forward slash John Fisher. So they're able to find you, connect with you on LinkedIn and website and everything else. So I really appreciate having you here today. Thank mm -hmm. you so and, much. And we'll probably have him on again too with his, your boss, right? Yeah. Yes. Mitch Brewer, yeah. the founder of our company, um, hopefully yep. will be on soon. Yep. Also, that would be yep. amazing. Trying to, make, trying to make that happen. Love it. Yes. Love so it. Well, thanks thank so much you for coming so much. on today. It was great to have you on. Yeah, absolutely. And it's such short notice, by the way. Thank <laughs> <laughs> yep, you got to be flexible, right? Happy Valentine's Day. We'll make sure you can take one of the prop cookies. You know, we got to sweeten you up before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Right. We are ready to hear from our next video. Good morning and welcome to Podcast AI. Today we are going to talk about how artificial intelligence can help you grow your business. I wanted to tell you a little bit about the show and what you can look forward to in the coming episodes. Every week we're going to talk about technology and how it can be used to create content. Everybody talks about ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an amazing tool and there's a lot of clones and, and alternatives that are going to be coming out over the couple, next couple of weeks, months. And what we can do is we can use ChatGPT along with other tools to help create interesting new content. Now, uh, some of the things that we're going to talk about are a little absurd. They're a little abstract, like, okay, it can do this, but we'd never really use it. When we are creative, push the envelope, push the edges. This is what this technology can do. Uh, and granted, we'll maybe never use it like that, but maybe there are some uses that will come out of it as a result of pushing that envelope, put, you know, pushing the edges a little bit. I'm sorry. They're stealing their cookies. We have to do a cookie count, you guys. There have been people over here thieving on cookies already. John wants a cookie. They might be gone. We're going to try, John. John, we'll try, but We're they try. all like the cookies here, so I don't know. Happy to see you <laughs> watching us. We miss you today, John. We'll maybe save Ava a cookie, too. <laughs> Speaking of John, we have our next guest, John Neal. John has over 40 years of experience in public accounting with a BBA in accounting and management information systems and a master's of science in taxation. He is especially focused on closely held businesses and their owners to help them to help them keep more money in their pockets. Who doesn't want that? <laughs> Relieve stress and sleep at night. But I like all of that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. John also has helped hundreds of businesses grow by offering personal hands and assistance in accounting, business creation, and expansive tax planning, financial planning, organizational development, acquisition strategies. He is the international, you're an author too? He's an international best-selling author having written seven books on various financial and tax <laughs> topics and has appeared on local and national radio television shows as well as podcasts. Well, welcome to the show, John. Thanks. There's much more to you that I did not know about until just now. Absolutely. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day to you. I Same love you. the red. You brought it on today. I wore black. Uh, you know, whatever. 
bring it in on with the lipstick. So <laughs> it's how, in your nails. Uh, oh, well, that's true. Okay. I yeah. do have it on the nails. Um, so how do you keep um, keep creative with accounting and kind of referring back to our question of the day where we where we started? How do you keep your creative? Yeah. For me personally, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Um, I've always been involved in music. Okay. So I do a lot of singing. Love. In the, in the shower, <laughs> in, in the office, at church. Um, and then the, the dog that Mitch was talking about, when I get home, I get on the floor and do them. I love it. No, that's great. That's a lot of joy and happiness, I think. I think. Yeah, that is a great way to be creative. Um, so, because when you're doing that, you're not thinking about your numbers and your taxes and stuff nope. like that. It's totally opposite. See, it's totally different sides of your brain, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. So, what do you need to do as a business? Well, that's just a huge question. What <laughs> What do I need to do in a business to be successful? Well, I, th I think, I mean, there's, there's any number of things. But number one, it helps to talk to people about why you want to be in business. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of our niches in our, at our firm is restaurants. And I always tell people just because you like to eat doesn't mean you can run a restaurant. That is very true. So you need, <coughs> you need advisors, helpful. right? Yeah. You, you need, you need advisors, mm -hmm. um, you know, insurance people, bank, bankers, lawyers, accountants, um, to, to help you get your thoughts in line. I always like to tell people to write things out and have a written business plan about what you want to do, why you want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so many people skip that step. Yeah. Yeah, they really do. Mm -hmm. Including myself. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes I don't think you always know. Uh, it's so fluid whole, when That I whole do. big picture, you don't no. know it in, because you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You right. Know? Yeah. So it's kind of hard. I think maybe when you get a little bit more experience, you've had a few mistakes happen, you're learning along the way. And then by then maybe, but at some point you should really be de de developing a plan of some sort. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It lives in here. It's not written in the stone. So anyways. Yeah. Yeah. It's important <laughs> for us to write it down, right? Yes. Yes. Because <clears throat> uh, people will want to see it. Yes. How are you going to be successful? Well, it's all up here. Yeah, yeah. So, right. Well, what happens if you're right? Exactly. Well, yeah. and I'm not out there asking for loans and stuff either. So right. when that, you know, if that were to come into play, well, then that might be more of a thing. But I'm just kind of seeing where the business takes me at mm -hmm. this point. Yeah, because yeah. it's not I'm not a brick and mortar type business. So it's very different. But um, this is kind of the question of the day for me, because mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to be I'm going to be on the look for this. Why should I hire a CPA or accountant for my business? Because they can help you succeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, in what's it now? 40. It'll be 46 years. I've been doing this in May. I've seen a lot of businesses uh, some of them have become very successful, some of them not so successful, and I think kind of the the thread with the successful businesses that they they listen to their advisors. Yes. You know, if I tell you, based on experience, whatever, you know, these walls should be pink and your sales are going to double, chances are they are, even though you hate pink. Yeah. You gotta listen to you gotta listen to the sales are gonna double part. You gotta listen to the whole sentence, not just that your wall should be pink, right? Like it's really important when you have someone advising you that you're taking the whole, the whole scenario into play. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you when you do counsel your clients and say you know things like these these numbers are good or these numbers are not good, are are they responding to those? Are they trying to make changes or yeah. do you help them? coach them on those changes, yeah. give them ideas. And, and that's, and that's another part of, of hiring a CPA or an accountant is yes, we are numbers people, but you have to go behind the numbers. Mm -hmm. We had a, uh, a client who was in the specialty trades business mm -hmm. and we looked at their financial statements through a, a certain period. And I noticed that while this one line item was maybe 2% of their sales, it had jumped from 
you know, one percent to two percent. So it doubled. Mm-hmm. Asked them about it. They didn't think too much of it. And then they got started. You know, they started thinking about it. And it turns out that some smooth talking salesman came in and said, well, we can sell you this product uh, for 40 cents a unit cheaper. And so they went with it, <clears throat> but they didn't realize it would take three of those to do what the other one mm. did, plus the labor in between. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, saving 40 cents actually cost them, you know, whatever, $3. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're not looking at the full big picture where you see it all laid out when you're right. looking at everything. So um, it looks like we have we have a comment. Let's. I see it. I see we're hovering over it. I want one of those. Cookies. Adam, everyone wants our cookies. Save Cookie. it until Adam, Friday. Adam, some of these cookies are yours. Save it until Friday. They're going to be long gone, sweetheart. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ava needs a cookie, too. I think, you know, Ava, John's with Ava right now, so I guess yeah. we can save Ava a cookie, too. <laughs> So does she want a pink one or a red one or a white one? Yeah, we, we got to find out. There's some yep. cupcakes. We got to find out what kind she wants. So how can you help me make money? We talked a little bit about it, but are, are there other tips that you can help me to make some money? Yeah. One thing that we are involved in is a concept that's based on a book written by a man named Mike Mahalo. It's called Profit First. Oh, I love that book. And it's a, it's a strategy, we call it a way of life, where, as, as I say, you legally skim money off the top mm-hmm. of your business mm-hmm. to reward you for being in business. Mm-hmm. And then what's left is what you can spend on rent and advertising and supplies and things like that, rather than too many times especially this time of year when I'm sitting down with, with clients and we say, well, you know, you made $75,000. They go, where did it go? Yeah. Here, 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 here. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you can put that $75,000 off to the side and you also, you also put money away for taxes mm-hmm. because again, you know, you made $75,000, you owe the IRS, 11 grand they're like where am i coming up with that kind of money yeah exactly. and that that really i've been there that sucks in March, in april <laughs> like oh that wasn't supposed to happen like that this year zinger ooh, well I'll, pre- I'll prepare for that one better next year <laughs> well and then next year comes and <laughs> no 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 i only took me one time because yeah, right. i read that profit first book and i got that all figured out now so i'm all good good <laughs> yeah but yeah, that profit first book is very, very good. It helps you put things into buckets instead of watching and then instead of just assuming it's going to be there because it's yep. hard when you've got salespeople and all the different money coming and going and you're like making changes. Like for me with website design, I'm dumping one product, changing out another product, adding in a person, taking out a person, doing this to like things are constantly moving. How do you possibly keep up on all of that to make sure that you're going to have all the, the money available for the things that you need at the time that they come up. Yeah. And that's what profit first is all about. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. You're working on percentages. So, you know, 10% of nothing is nothing and 10% of a hundred is, you mm-hmm. know, 10 bucks. So yeah, it helps you kind of plan yeah. for, it helps you just really plan ahead to get everything. So you're not freaking out when the time comes going and you don't have to have your accountant come to you and say, mm, you need to, you need to do something different. <laughs> so if I'm going to ask you same thing, like I asked John Fisher, if you were to give someone a piece of advice today that could help change their life forever, whether it be business, personal, one piece of advice, what could you give today? Don't think you know it all mm-hmm. and don't stick your head in the sand. Ooh, that that is good. Don't think you, just the first part. Don't think you know it all, because yeah. uh, especially with smaller business owners, we want to know it all, right? Like mm-hmm. we think we know it all, but at a point, is it more advantageous to just pay the person that does know it all about that specific thing? 
I say nobody knows at all. Right. But, yeah. About yeah. this, about a specific thing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Maybe not all, but they know a heck of a lot more than you know. It's kind so. of similar to what John's response was too earlier. Go out and get people's help. Go out and find people to help you mm -hmm. and, and get some, at least get educated, you know, yep. go out and talk to some different people and maybe it's not the right time for you. And, but at least when the time does come, when you feel motivated enough to really get the people to help you, you'll have a really good understanding of what's all available. Mm -hmm. So doing that. Yeah. Okay. And get your hand out of the, get your head out of the sand. Out of the sand. <laughs> <laughs> do, we have, do we have another one that you're hovering on? <clears throat> John Carlo. It's probably. Oh yeah, I just got this one. Oh, I got two. Another. Side note, John Neal is the sharpest dressed person in the building. Well, well done. done. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well done. Or Adam just called out the entire building. <laughs> Van oh, Van and I haven't seen Van in so long. Yeah. Solid content. Yes. This is, content this is Van, Van's expertise, though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Van, is a, Van is a numbers guy. Yeah. Great to see Van today. Awesome. So. Okay. Um, well, thank you for being on the show today. My pleasure. Um, and do you have any specials or offers for the audience today? Yeah, uh, we, we always make this offer. Uh, if you're interested in talking about starting a business or right now, you know, taxes, mm -hmm. what you can do. We always have a half hour f free meeting, no obligation. See if we're fit. Uh, you know, you can go to uh, neilgroup.net and fill out the little form or you can call our office this is a busy time of year for you doing all the taxes it is <laughs> just add a few more why not <laughs> why not always but he must always not be too busy because to he's here so that's right that means well, my, my team is picking up the slack oh, see, that's see? The key. see that's the key right there he's got a team you guys and we do have a page for you on the at forward slash John Neal. So everybody can find his information there and they can reach out to you. All right. And um, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Best dress says the expansive yes. guy. So mm -hmm. you are on it today. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Recapping today. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's, this is a hundred percent more motivated me to know. I have to get the experts to do what I should not be doing. hundred percent. Are you still doing your own taxes? This year I am, Yeah. but I'm preparing. I'm, I'm going to meet with somebody after a crazy tax season and still try to prepare as much so that I'm as prepared for next year to have mm -hmm. someone else do it this year. Because yeah. right now it's still okay for me. I'm, I'm good enough in what I've done, but I want to know, throughout the entire year things that I need to be doing in order to give them the best information and mm -hmm. to have the best outcome. Yeah. So I'm not waiting until the end of the year or till next year to do it. So unless I get talked into them doing it this year, but we'll see. <laughs> if they think my stuff is good enough to give them to do the best work for my taxes, well, you know, hey. that I give you kudos for that because I have not touched my taxes probably 30 years. <laughs> I've always had so many. I stress out about it and I'm so tired of being stressed about it. I, and it's oof. like, I always think, Oh God, I'm going to have to pay. And I never end up having to pay. So I don't know why I get so stressed out about it, <laughs> but things could change. Yeah. And you know, as business grows, the potentials mm -hmm. to pay are a lot higher, mm -hmm. you know, so that is absolutely. true. And we want to thank all of our volunteers today for helping out behind the scenes. Um, we have a lot of people helping out behind the scenes. But if we are, always have room and we're growing as a show. So if you are wanting to help volunteer for the show, please contact us. And uh, we'll see how we can fit you in to make you make your skills shine on this show. Absolutely. So, yeah. Where, where do they contact us? Ideas. She's testing ideas me at theconnectshow.com. Because I used to always say the ideas. Yeah, well, hey. Contact us at the right. ideas. And apparently I was confusing people. We want to thank everyone <laughs> for joining us on the show. If you're watching us on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, the replay, live, mm -hmm. whatever it is, definitely comment, share the show. It helps to help our community grow and continue to help others out there in the business world. Um, it.
goes a really long way to just sharing the mm -hmm. one video. So thank you so much to everybody and we will see you next week. Mm -hmm. See you guys next week.